Um, thank you, General Manager. Um, welcome everyone to this council meeting for Clarence City Council. In declaring the meeting open and in accordance with our usual procedure, please join me in the council prayer. Almighty God, we humbly beseech thee to vouchsafe thy blessing upon this council. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of thy glory and the true welfare of the people of the City of Clarence. Amen. Amen. I would uh, also like to acknowledge the Tasmanian Aboriginal community as the traditional custodians of this land in which we are meeting tonight and pay respects to Elders past and present. I note we have uh, everyone present and so there are no apologies. Um, moving to item three before I go through the start items, the Mayor's communication. Tonight we are streaming live this meeting to you on YouTube and a copy of the full agenda is available on Council's website. A copy of the motions up for decision will also be available on the feed. The meeting will be conducted in the usual way. Voting will again occur electronically via the chat bar on the side of your screen. I'd like to table uh, significant meetings and attendances over the last three weeks and they will appear in the minutes. Um, tonight, the general managers advise that uh, there's an urgent agenda item for us to consider. That matter needs to be considered in closed uh, council meeting tonight. And to that end, a procedural motion with an absolute majority is required. Can I have, please have a mover and a seconder for the following motion, that council includes an additional planning item in the closed section of this meeting in relation to an appeal on a planning matter. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, I'll Alderman Blomley. Oh, Mayor. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I think that was uh, Alderman Von Berto. Uh, being a procedural, there's no uh, debate, so I'll put the motion if we could have a voting box, please. It's up now, Mayor. Thank you. I can't see it at the moment. Yes, I can. I can't see it either. It's Wendy. I've got it. Have you got your chat bar open, Alderman Kennedy? <clears throat> yes, I have. Where is the chat bar? Is that on the top right? No, it's uh, if you go to the toolbar across the bottom edge of your screen, it's oh, the yes. second button in from the right where the red phone is. Uh, second from the right, show conversation. Thank you. That's the one. OK, I'll give it another 15 seconds. Okay, voting is uh, closed. I declare the motion carried. Hang on. By an absolute majority. Hang on. I haven't voted. Well, I'm afraid, Alderman James, uh, I'll give you one last opportunity then if you'd like to. Thank you. I've recorded a vote for you now, I think. Uh, nevertheless, the uh, motion is carried with an absolute majority. I'd now like to move on to the start items. Um, the first of the them is the confirmation of the minutes for the 18th of May, as circulated, be taken as confirmed. Are there any comments on the uh, confirmation of the minutes? Secondly, that the Council notes the workshops of the 25th and 29th of May and the 1st of June and the agenda brief of the 5th of June. Are there any comments on Council workshop? Sign. Note that there are no petitions tabled. Moving on to item 10, reports from outside bodies. Uh, reports from single and joint authorities. First of all, Copping Refuse Disposal Site Authority. Alderman Walker, I note there's a letter in the agenda and a quarterly report for closed session. Do you have anything else to add at this stage? No. Okay, within the Tasmanian Water Corporation, 
Um, I received a letter from the chairman of the board today, which has been circulated to Alderman, but I will uh, um, table it also for the minutes. The letter was quite a lengthy one in response to inquiries from three councils as to why Tots Water um, uh, decided <laughs> not to uh, issue dividends or part dividends for the year. Um, there's a full explanation there and a timeline. Under the Greater Hobart Committee, uh, we held a formal, first formal meeting on the 28th of May and uh, there was a communication issued in regard to that, which um, I have circulated, but I think it's important. It's included in the agenda papers, but essentially we agreed on a schedule of work needed to develop a shared vision for Greater Hobart. And we also uh, developed a protocol to engage the uh, other Southern councils that are not part of the Greater Hobart Committee. Um, happy to take any questions on those matters. Can't see any. Uh, Alderman Blomley, uh, your hand is up. Okay. Uh, moving on to um, reports from council and special committees. Um, are there any other reports? Um, I, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Um, I've tabled the Richmond Advisory Committee minutes and also a briefing to Alderman on the Richmond Bicentennial proposal. Thank you. Any other reports? Okay, moving on to item 11.1, uh, the weekly briefing reports for the 18th, 25th of May and the 1st of June, that the information contained in them be noted. Uh, are there any uh, questions in regard to the weekly briefing reports? Uh, yes, Alderman James. Uh, I think I had Alderman Edmonds first. Okay, I'll go second, thanks. Alderman Edmonds. Uh, yeah, just a, a general question on the briefing reports. We obviously have a lot of decisions by delegation in those. I, could you just refresh my memory or the general manager when we are reviewing that um, decision? General manager. Um, thank you. I, I recall that um, that it was a 12 month uh, period that we would review, um, but I need to, uh, to confirm that unless Mr Lovell has a recollection that's more accurate. Uh, through Mr Mayor, I do have it recorded in my diary, I'll have to, but I can uh, uh, I can pass the message on shortly. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to that in the chat. Uh, 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 Alderman James. Uh, thanks, Mr Chairman. The weekly briefing report of the 25th of May and in particular to upcoming DSG roadworks on page 15, it refers to a number of projects there and my question is through you to Mr. Graham. Mr. Graham, it refers on the on page 16 to the DSG will be undergoing construction works on the Tasman Highway off the Acton off ramp until the 30th of June. Um, is there any um, update in relation to the extension off the off ramp, Acton off ramp, and to join obviously with uh, Richmond Road. It doesn't seem to uh, uh, provide any information about what's obviously uh, uh, as part of the construction of that new access road through Cambridge and linking with the um, Richmond Road. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, I don't have any further information other than what's been provided to the Alderman, so I'll follow up with DSG and um, further advise Council. Okay, uh, perhaps covered in the weekly briefing report? Yes. Thank you. Um, any other questions on the weekly briefing reports? In that case, uh, could I have a motion to for the start items as recommended be agreed? Alderman Edmonds? So moved, Mr. Matt. So seconded, Graham. sorry. Second. So, Alderman was that Chong. Alderman Chong seconded. Yep. yep. Um I'll put the motion if I could have a voting box, please. Sorry, it's up it's up now, Mayor. Thank you.
Okay, uh, 15 seconds. I have uh, 11 responses uh, all for the motion, therefore I declare it carried. Um, the Moving back to the non-start items now, um, the next one on the agenda is declarations of interest or Alderman or close associate. Uh, I understand Alderman James, you have a declaration? Uh, that's correct, uh, Mr Mayor. It's in regard to 11.3.4. Um, the DA at 21 Rywena Road in Montague Bay. Okay, thank you. Any other declarations of interest? Thank you. Um, well, that brings us to the um, planning matters and the. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, Gordon Gomley. Sorry, sorry, uh, Mayor. Uh, My apologies. <laughs> no problem. Sorry, Mayor, um, there is a deputation that I have that I uh, need to read out. Ah, sorry, okay. Well, um, please go ahead with that, General Manager. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, the deputation is from Mr David Jones in respect to the um, DA for 21 Ryawena Road, item 11.3.4. Uh, the deputation reads as follows. As I'm not permitted to physically make a physical representation for the above application, I've produced the following to support it. I've been, been a business owner in Montague Bay since 2009 and have been improving the property, which has been appreciated by the neighbours. I decided to move my accountancy practice to Montague Bay, so I purchased the top shop, which in a poor, was in a poor state of repair, having been vandalised with graffiti and broken windows. While I was working on the site and a number of locals asked what I, I would be doing in the property and were disappointed that I was not restoring the shop to its previous commercial activities of being a convenience store with hot food. I decided that the 195 households in Montague Bay, Rosny suburb should have access to these facilities without travelling to Bell Reeve, Rosny Park or Lindisfarne. It is also the opportunity to employ locals and I have provisionally employed two full-time staff and will, re will require additional casual employees. I received approval to add a cafe on site, but I have not been able to convert the house as the tenants are unable to find alternative accommodation. Food trailer became available. I have sought uh, separate approval for the food van on site. It was only licensed for deep fried food, burgers and drinks. I've applied to environmental health services to broaden the food options to include more healthy alternatives, as well as the general grocery items, including newspapers. It is currently in its original livery, which is quite garish and unattractive. It has been cited so it is behind a hedge uh, and cannot be seen easily from the east along Rywena Road. I'm in the process of creating a level walkway with a steel fence to protect customers from vehicles. I am also cladding the van in wood to give it a more attractive and modern appearance. Thank you. Thank you. And I uh, also note there's no matters for public question time. So uh, I now advise that Council intends to sit as a planning authority under the Land Use Planning and Approvals Act. And uh, the first item on the agenda is a uh, development application for 12 Park Street, Bell Reeve, three multiple dwellings. Alderman Blomley? Mr. Mo uh, Mr. Mayor, I move the motion um, circulated standing in my name. Yeah, I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Newington as a seconder. Alderman Blomley, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the motion before this council is to approve the development application for three multiple dwellings at 12 Park Street, Bell Reef. In my view, this is not a complicated planning matter, and nor should it be a complicated consideration to this council, which now, as we all know, uh, sits as a planning authority. The DA was advertised in accordance with the statutory requirements, and one, one, representation was received. This one representation raised three issues. And as outlined in part C of my motion, 
all three issues raised by the sole representor were deemed to have, in the words of the manager of city planning, no determining weight under the scheme in relation to this proposal. So, in essence, approval or otherwise of this DA now turns on this council's interpretation of the proposal under P4 Clause 10.4.1 of the Clarence Interim Planning Scheme of 2015. In recent days, we have been furnished with professional advice, conflicting professional advice. One expert says it does comply and another says it doesn't. Therein lies the quandary before us this evening. Mr Mayor, as set out in the explanatory notes accompanying this motion, median density is only one consideration under the Henry Designer Consulting and Clarence City Council REMPAT decision, colloquially known as the 6 Venice Street decision. In order to determine whether the density is compatible, one must have regard to the full range of densities existing in the 100 metres radius, including where the proposed density sits in that range and whether there are any outliers impacting the median. In regards to this DA, a quarter of the housing stock has a greater density than what is proposed, meaning, meaning that this DA falls within the mid middle 50% of densities in the surrounding area. It therefore simply is not possible to conclude that it is incompatible when that many dwellings are already of a higher density. Further, there are three dwellings within the existing dwellings in the 100 metre radius, which, has, which have areas of 1,400 square metres, which is a jump of up to 400 square metres from the overall nearest sites and clearly impact the overall density consideration. It is therefore appropriate to consider these outliers in terms of the total range of dwellings in the 100 metre radius. Mr Mayor, taking all of this into full consideration and also applying some good old fashioned common sense, it is abundantly clear that the proposed DA is compatible with the existing area and for this reason deserves our full unqualified support. Mr Mayor, I commend the motion and seek the support of colleagues. Thank you, Alderman Blumley. Alderman Newington. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Look, I have to um, agree with the, the technical aspects of the uh, interpretation of the whole um, approval process from uh, Alderman Blomley there. I think he summed it up quite well, but I mean, I just want to add to that and say that, you know, I mean, people want to live in these sorts of areas because it's, you know, people who, you know, they want smaller houses, they, people want smaller blocks. You know, that seems to be the direction that um, a lot of people are going these days. They don't want to have the, the land to maintain and look after. And I think that, um, you know, as uh, Alden Bromley said, I mean, there's plenty of other places that are very, very similar to this uh, development um, already through Bell Reeve, you know, all the way through, you know, Howe and, and um, you know, some of the larger lots in there have certainly been converted into, into multiple dwellings. Um, I think that the real issue here is that, you know, it's certainly not going to be out of place. It's a consistent approach where it's, there's already existing dwellings, uh, very similar. People want to live in these locations, and I don't think it's in, uh, you know, it shouldn't be up to us to, um, to um, you know, knock these sort of things back. And, I mean, if we can create more housing stock out there, well, that's another couple of houses for people to move into and another couple of houses for someone else to uh, to move up into or get their first house. So, you know, for those, those of us that are um, concerned about uh, housing affordability and housing um, access for everyone, I think it's certainly a good move to, um, to allow as many of these... Um, you know, places to go ahead, and I certainly support and I encourage the rest of my colleagues to, um, you know, to support this um, this development as well. Thank you, Alderman Newington. Other speakers? I don't have any hands up. Uh, Alderman Mulder. Uh, you're on mute, I think. Indeed I am. I was actually... Uh, yeah. um, I'm opposed to these sorts of infill developments and the higher densities in what is essentially village areas. Notwithstanding decades of old approvals in the area, which provide the, uh, the basis for suggesting these aren't overdevelopments, um, 
these would not have these developments would not have been approved by us or the or the rumpat under um, current under um, at least two of the three recent planning schemes two dwellings are usual in this area in terms of infill development three are not although there are some outlying exceptions as i said that go back a long way i must go with our experts and, um, and, and, and because um, they have served us well, and they are experts. And let's see what further guidance Rumpat will give us in terms of qualifying the uh, Six Venice Street decision. And it's one thing to just r relate these on, but um, there are things like height and things uh, in, in the Venice Street decision um, which, uh, which give it a different flavour. I'd like to see um, this idea of, uh, you know, three, four and more dwellings per block. Um, I think we need a bit more clarity and a bit more decision making um, in terms of whether they're allowed. On the first instance, I will go with the officer's report on this and I, because I do think that um, um, the purpose of these site events is, is to stop overdevelopment. Thanks, Alderman Mulder. Alderman James. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Look, um, one of the uh, provisions on under the scheme in Section 8.10.1 is that the determining factor in the application has to take into consideration all applicable standards and requirements in the planning scheme and any representations received pursuant. But in the case of exercising any discretion, then the matter is relevant and must be relevant to the particular discretion being exercised. The council officers, in their wisdom, have referred to the section in the performance criteria in 10.4.1A1. And I quote, it is proposed the development would have a site area per dwelling unit of 271.3 uh, cubic uh, square metres, and that does not comply with the site area prescribed by the acceptable solution of 325 square metres per dwelling unit. And as a result of that, it has specifically made that comment that, and has supported their actions by recommending refusal that the approach that was taken by the Resource Management Planning Appeals Tribunal in the case of 6 Venice Street was that the surrounding area had to be taken into consideration within that 100 metre radius. Notwithstanding that, the officers have said, and their expert advice in relation to the general residential zone, is in fact that there has to be an, a uh, multiple dwellings must only have a site area per dwelling that is uh, uh, that is less than the 325 square metres or that specified for the application density in Table 10.4.1. And quite clearly in 10.4.1, this proposal does not meet the density requirements and by the very nature of that, the officers have recommended for refusal. In summary, and it's quite clear if we all go uh, refer to the um, uh, on page 24, there is a strong argument that the proposal does not demonstrate compliance with 10.4.1 PA1 as it is not compatible with the density of the surrounding area. On careful consideration of the site area per dwelling, that must be undertaken. And council can therefore form the opinion that the proposed density is not consistent with, nor similar to, or in harmony, or in a, or in a broad correspondence uh, with the density of all other existing developments within 100 metres. And quite frankly, I, and I think a number of councillors who were on council at the time when the um, Six Venice matter went to council, it was refused on two bases. Firstly, on the density, and it wasn't compatible with the site. And secondly, within the surrounding area. It was upheld by the tribunal 
on those very points that the, that our planning officers have um, <clears throat> outlined on page 22 and 23. And it went to a, um, appeal and the tribunal found that decision that council refused at that time, upheld that council's decision and it was refused. What happened next in relation to this particular development? They went back to the drawing board and therefore I think from memory reduced the number of units on the site so that it was in accordance with the actual um, uh, density requirement of the site. Mr Mayor, we need to be very careful when we sort of venture away from what has been determined by REMPAT in this particular case. And also too, we need to rely on the actual expertise and the understanding that the council officers have been given as in a, in a sense as stewards of our planning scheme. And I believe that their recommend, recommendation for refusal ought to be carried. And if this particular motion is lost, I will foreshadow the officer's recommendation. I think you're muted, Mayor. Um, Alderman von Berto. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, it's very important that we actually keep in mind that Council's required to uphold its planning scheme. And the density of a zone is a key component of the planning scheme. Both Alderman Mulder and Alderman James have gone into quite a bit of detail in relation to the officer's report and recommendation, and I'm not going to do that. But I think it's really important to note that we have expert planning advice, which has been supported by independent legal advice that has actually been provided prior to the decision. And Alderman Blomley is right in terms of that this is a situation where we have two planning experts, if you like, councils and the proponents, actually differing in terms of the interpretation of a particular aspect of the planning scheme. However, as Alderman James has made clear, we also have a decision of the tribunal that we need to take into account. That is in relation to a very similar situation. So from my perspective, it isn't quite balanced in terms of one expert against another in terms of planners. There is the component of the legal advice and there is also the component of the tribunal's decision. Whenever we actually look at a planning application, at the very beginning of each report, we have a heading that says legislative requirements. And at the beginning that notes that the report on this item details the basis and reasons for the recommendation. Any alternative decision by council will require a full statement of reasons in order to maintain the integrity of the planning approval process and to comply with the requirements of the Judicial Review Act and the Local Government Meeting Procedure Regulations 2015. I believe in this case that the alternative motion does not meet those requirements. So I will not be supporting this alternative motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Lomberto. Are there any other speakers? Alderman Blumley, right a reply. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That certainly gives me uh, uh, plenty of fodder in my uh, in my reply. And can I say what I find most concerning when um, we? Sorry, Alderman uh, Blomley, if you could hold off for a moment. 
Alderman Walker did have his hand up. I just missed it. Uh, if we could have him comment before. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I can confirm it was well and truly up before uh, you did call for the uh, summation. I was indeed uh, on council for the Venice Street decision, and it was a close decision, 7-5. And I voted against uh, proceeding with Venice Street uh, for a variety of reasons that were listed, but predominantly around density. Um, we are sitting as a planning authority and we have to interpret things through the planning scheme of which we administer. It's not my choice. I'd, I'd be using the 2007 Clarence planning scheme if I could go back to it. That thing had the chassis of a Ferrari. Things were in, things were out. They weren't coming to us. It was simple. It was fair. It did not create community division because people knew what they were getting into when they bought a block and people knew uh, what to expect their neighbours may or may not do. That is now past. But I think it's really important to make this point as someone that had a block of 666 or 667 metres squared. So it wasn't subdividable because under that scheme, 375 metres squared was the minimum. That was the minimum. It has now been reduced to fifth, by 50 metres to 325. That is a big stimulus or potentially free kick, depending on how you want to look at it, as far as stimulating activity. That's a big change. Um, so we're looking at that 325 minimum, and this isn't a case of someone coming through with an average of 313 uh, or 321, 271.33 metres per unit or 53.67 metres squared less than the prescribed minimum that was 50 metres less than what was under the previous scheme. Um, we have to get smarter about density and around transport nodes it should be denser than this um, but in this general suburban sitting think about what that may mean for each and every block and people that have uh, housing and what they understand the value of when they bought it and, and what might be applicable to have occurred next to them. Because these are things that may have some permutations depending on this decision. Maybe it won't, but 53.67 metres squared variance on the 325 that was a reduction from the 375. Significant numbers. Um, so do bear that in mind. Um, reflect on that. I. I you know, they are by all means, um, you know, quality and clever um, dwellings, but that that's it all hinges on the density. So um, I'm not going to predict what might happen at an appeal level if it went to that. Um, but there is some arguments around mean, median, mode, this, that, from 100 metres and everything else. And we got uh, the officers sought robust and deeper interpretation around that. And I presume that's why they asked for an extension. They got that advice. If there's conflict, well, um, we should principally probably rely on our, on the staff advice first and, and other things at a different level. But bear in mind that big jump because um, there is a place for infill. But again, when the minimums change from that, it should be probably one of the number one decisions when you come to make your vote in a moment. Thank you. Are there any final speakers before I hand back to Alderman Blomley? Thank you, Alderman Blomley. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I thank colleagues uh, for their contributions tonight. Uh, what I always find very concerning is a selective quoting of either the scheme or the officer's report, the cherry picking, if you like, to support certain positions. When we refer, as Alderman Von Berto did, to the legal opinion, none of us have any understanding as to what was actually provided to legal advisors to provide their opinion that the that this could be in conflict with the planning scheme. And I'll go back to my opening statement, where to me the most important aspect here, or well, it's twofold. One is obviously um, a robust understanding of the planning scheme, but two is good old fashioned common sense. And I thought a comparison of what could be approved planning exempt, that is, for those that, 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 that aren't aware, the matters that don't need planning approval, this is what could have been approved for 12 Park Street versus what has been proposed. And the first one is a single dwelling with a site coverage of footprint of 
which equates to 407 square metres or 43.81 building squares in the old terms. Noting the site coverage is just the footprint. If the house was two storey, it could of course be double that figure. Park Street units have a site coverage of 29.98%, which equates to 244.10 square metres or 26.27 building squares. The Park Street units therefore is 162.9 square metres or 40% less in site coverage than that of a planning exempt single house. Secondly, single dwelling to a height of 8.5 metres, three storeys permitted by the scheme's building envelope diagram. Park Street units, as we all ought to be aware, are only single storey and you want to talk about density. Thirdly, single dwelling with zero setbacks to both side boundary. Those walls could quite conceivably, under the scheme, be three metres high, built directly on the boundary line permitted by the scheme's boundary envelope diagram. As you all, as we all aware, are aware, Park Street units have a setback from both side boundaries of three metres and 4.2 metres respectively. And lastly, Mr Mayor, a single dwelling, plenty exempt, would have a significant impact on all adjoining neighbours in terms of visual bulk, height, overshadowing and overviewing with owners having no right of representation or appeal whatsoever. And here tonight before us, we have a DA that sends all the right messages to our, to our city. This is a DA worthy of support, and I urge uh, colleagues to support it. Thank you. Could I have a voting box, please, General Manager? So uh, the vote is uh, the alternative motion, which is to approve the application. Mayor, I think Alderman Kennedy was still having problems voting, so it might be worth verbally checking with her. Thank you. No, I've just voted. It's in. It's submitted. Oh, thank you, Wendy. Okay. Um, I have I've got 11 responses, but there's a clear decision. Oh, another 10 seconds to give the final opportunity. Okay. Uh, the decision is lost. 12-5. Alderman James. Uh, thanks, Mr. Five, Mayor. Thank Order you, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor. I move the officer's recommendation. Do I have a second, please? Uh, Alderman Mulder. Thank you, Alderman James. Uh, no, Mr. Mayor. I don't see. I wish to say any more than what I said in the prior, prior motion. Thanks, Alderman Mulder. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, um, simply to say that. Um, to compliment the officers on the report and the uh, and the courage to uh, actually apply the planning scheme as they understood it based on their um, on their expert opinion um, and i am sh absolutely sure that along that course there uh, may have been some facts that they uh, that they chose not to and other facts that they did so uh, like all of us we're guilty of cherry picking because we cannot possibly address all the evidence in a three minute uh, contribution thank you other speakers Alderman Warren. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have to say that I was a little torn on the last application and I didn't, um, I was certainly swayed by some of the speakers. Um, I have a lot of sympathy for this development. Um, I've seen far worse infill developments that are multi story, and I appreciate the fact that it wasn't going to impact on the neighbours in the way that other buildings might have done um, when we, we certainly could have considered overshadowing, things like that. But I was um, basically persuaded by the strength of the arguments about the planning scheme. And I know that colleagues around this table or around our village often say, you know, it's the planning scheme and we must abide by it whether we like it or not. Well, you know, sometimes it goes both ways. And in this time, I think that uh, we do need to stick to the um, planning scheme. 
I've lived in England where the houses are joined together. I've seen suburbs in Adelaide where you can't, new suburbs, so you can't even walk between the houses. The gaps are so narrow. I don't think that's what we want for our suburbs. Um, so even though this development is inherently, it's not one of the worst I've seen, it would in fact open the door for some fairly unfortunate developments, I think. Uh, where we would see a lot of buildings crammed into a very sh small space. And I think inherently Tasmanians like their space in their suburbs. Um, so um, I, I will be supporting this motion. Thank you. Other speakers? Uh, right of reply, Alderman James. Uh, no, seek council support, Mr Mayor. Thanks. But I have a voting box for the officer's recommendation, which is for a refusal, please. Uh, it should be up now, Mayor. Another 15 seconds. We're missing one vote, me. That's it. Uh, we have the ball now. The motion is carried 8-4. Thank you. So moving on to the next planning item, which is 11.3. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor if you, before we do that, I've just received a text message from a colleague. Just a point of clarification, if I may. Go ahead. But it's been alleged that, um, uh, or suggested that I was suggesting that the officers selectively quoted or were cherry picking. That wasn't the case at all. Uh, uh, point of order, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Alderman James, page. I'm taking this as a personal explanation. I thought so, that Mr. Mayor, just as a point of clarification, uh, I was not in any way, shape or form seeking to reflect upon the officers. It quite clearly, from my perspective, was, was uh, more a comment on uh, some of our colleagues. Thank you for that personal explanation, Alderman Blomley. Thank you for the opportunity, Mr Mayor. Uh, the next item on the agenda is 11.3.2, which is a development application at 5 Kent Street, Lindisfarne, for an addition to dwelling. Do I have a move and a seconder, please? So moved, uh, Mr Mayor. Oh, yeah. Blomley, seconded Alderman Mulder. <laughs> Alderman Blomley? Uh, move the recommend, recommendation, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, did you want to speak to it? No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think the report covers it off very nicely. Alderman Mulder. Uh, likewise, Mr. Mayor. Uh, any other speakers? In that case, there's no need for a right of reply. Voting box, please, General Manager. Should be coming up momentarily, Mayor. It's up now. Okay, uh, everyone's voted. It's carried unanimously. Um, the next item on the agenda is 11.3.3, .3, a development application at 110 Bangalore Street, Lauderdale, for two multiple dwellings. Yeah, I'll move that, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you. That was Alderman Newington. Second, Mr. Mayor. Alderman Blomley. Uh, Alderman Newington, do you wish to speak to it? Oh, only briefly, Mr. Mayor. I mean, look, you know, these, um, you know, I think this is a great improvement on the area down at Lauderdale, I mean, the old house that's there. Um, you know, this will help to improve, you know, stormwater runoff and all the things that are going to help to improve the um, environmental setup down there. Plus, it's a chance for someone to spend some money investing in our town. Um, you know, I mean, the, you know, it's approved by the council staff, and I think this is exactly the sort of thing that we need to do, contrary to the opinions of some other aldermen that are... Um, uh, Alderman, Newington, of, if could, Alderman Newington, if you could please stick with the planning items uh, and the issues for that item. Okay. Well, anyway, I think it's a um, you know great development for uh, this location, and I think we should all support it. Thank you, Alderman Blomley. Oh, Mr. Mayor, I couldn't in any way, shape, or form enhance on Alderman Newington's comments. <laughs> Are there any other speakers, please? That was easy. <laughs> in that case. Uh, there's no need for a right of reply. Um, no, I'll pass. Voting box, please. Uh, we want to 
1133. Uh, thank you, Mary. It should be coming up momentarily. It's up there now. Uh, the motion is carried unanimously. Moving on to item 11.3.4. Alderman uh, James, I understand you want to leave the meeting? Uh, yes, look, I'll just um, uh, sign out and I will be in. Thank you, Alderman James. Um, can I have a move and a, and a seconder for this motion, please? Alderman James Walker, seconded Alderman Chong. Just for the record, Mayor, um, I can confirm that Alderman James has left the meeting. Thank you. Alderman Walker, would you like to speak to it? Yes. Look, you can go through the officer's recommendation. The site has been a shop for a long time. I think it was a hallow shop back in the early 80s, if my memory serves me right, but it's been a long time between drinks. Um, and I think this is a reasonable um, and uh, appropriate use. And something to think of in the COVID year is, is is how the buying and selling of food may be changing, and this will fit into that uh, pattern. So, um, take comfort from the officer's recommendation, and uh, I would ask you to support it. Thank you, Alderman Chong. I think it's great to see something positive happening on this site, and seek support for the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Alderman Mulder. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, um, I too will be supporting this particular recommendation, but I, um, I just make the observation that in this case, um, it appears that the owner of the land is the person who is citing the, uh, the food van there, which is a pleasant change. Um, in regards to the other sites, uh, they are often in direct competition with some of our uh, shopkeepers and our business people, um, and uh, here they are sitting up there and they're not paying rates. This is an exception, but um, I accept that that's the way of the world. Um, and we've got to find a better way of making sure that um, these these types of businesses contribute to the cost of running the city in a way that other businesses do in terms of um, you know the path the, the paths and the roads and and the infrastructure that um, paid for by the citizens of Clarence uh, or the ratepayers of Clarence and which. Um, uh, without which the business couldn't do, but some of these uh, types of business don't make that contribution. Thank you. Um, other speakers? Uh, Alderman Walker, do you need a right of reply? Uh, no, and I won't even indulge with one either. <laughs> um, in that case, voting box, please, General Manager. Uh, should be coming up now, Mayor. What's up? Um, that's uh, carried unanimously. Could we invite Alderman James back into the meeting, please? Yes, sir. Uh, just give me one moment. Thank you. Uh, Alderman James should be back in now, Mayor. Okay, thank you very much. Um, well, that concludes our business as a planning authority. The next item that we need to deal with is under governance, 11.7.1, that Clarence Keep Connected initiative. We have a final project report. Um, could I have a move and a seconder, please? Uh, move Chong, mm -hmm. do I have a seconder? Uh, Alderman Warren, thank you. Alderman Chong, would you like to speak to it? Um, just very briefly, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, this is obviously the final report for the Keep Collect Connected project. Um, as noted, there were 164 responses, um, including 28 from organisations and 136 individuals. And I guess for me, it's important that we recognise the information um, that, that, and the issues that, ra that were raised. So the social isolation, economic hardship, access to natural spaces and areas the impacts on mental health, um, less ability for physical exercise and the need for increased connections. Some of these are obviously reducing as the restrictions uh, 
easing and being wound back, but some will be longer term. And I think it's very important as the uh, report requests that we communicate these findings to the Southern Regional Social Recovery Committee um, so that if there is anything that needs to be done in the longer term, they can pick un up and run with it. And I commend the motion to Council. Thank you. Alderman Warren. Um, yes, I'd like to commend the officers on the work on this because it was a quick response and it covered um, a, a range of demographics. It didn't just rely on electronic um, communication and the number of responses indicates how much appreciated this was um, because you know we think out, we're lucky if we get 30 responses to a survey. So 164 of um, responses in varying forms is indeed um, indicating that there was a need for this and that we have uh, obtained some useful information. Um, there does tend to be an over um, a dominant focus on the economy, but if your people aren't feeling safe and able to go out, um, then um, our businesses are going to suffer as a result. And certainly, um, there hasn't been any messaging for over 70s yet to say it's okay to go out. I think a lot of us have been enjoying our cups of coffee and visits to restaurants and dare, dare I say even the occasional bar or two, um, but there's been no indication from government that people who are in that vulnerable at risk um, category of being either over 70 or immunocompromised should be even considering going out. So I think we do need to work very hard on building community and, and this report gives us a lot of information to start on that. So again, I commend the officers for doing the work. Thank you, Alderman Edmonds. Thank you. Uh, just a quick question. I noticed on page four, and I think uh, Alderman Chong referenced the economic hardship. Uh, for us to extend that policy, does that have to come before a meeting? I do note we have got one more meeting before the end of the financial year. Or is that something that can be just done procedurally? Uh, perhaps you could take that in a right reply, Alderman Chong. Uh, yes, certainly. Thank you. Okay, Alderman von Berto. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to reiterate uh, what Alderman Warren has said. The officers concerned came to the party very quickly and put a huge amount of effort into the communication and the survey and the various other options that we used to connect with the community. And the work that they actually did in providing a report, and this report, my understanding is that it's only part of the report that was actually provided. There's a much more detailed report that was provided. And I think that they need to be commended for that work. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Mulder. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I sort of commend everyone on the report, but I do take the point, um, as the uh, Premier continually stressed, uh, the need to get out and exercise is, uh, is one of the best ways of um, avoiding uh, going, um, you know, stir crazy inside uh, what is euphemistically called lockdown. Now, we in Tasmania, of course, and particularly in Clarence, are blessed with um, many large open spaces and um, lots of beachfront and areas where it is quite possible to, um, to exercise and socially distance, which was always amused me or, or I was a bit surprised as to why the Park Service and all the government-owned um, land, the Park Service, chose to close down all their parks and reserves. Um, and uh, yet uh, Clarence, after some consideration, decided we would not do that. And I think that has been of great benefit to the people of Clarence, as judged by um, the number of people that you saw on the beaches and on our worries and in our reserves and our parkways. Of course, um, that wasn't the case for all residents of Clarence. There were some who, like at Clifton Beach and other places, um, had their beach <coughs> locked down because parks had mm -hmm. deemed that you couldn't go on their beaches. And the irony of all that came to me one morning when uh, the, the general manager for parks um, was on Sarah Gilman explaining, um, you know, the importance of uh, not all rushing into the parks and reserves. And when Sarah Gilman asked him on the, on the radio, uh, what was your, um, so um, what did you do during the lockdown to escape? And he said, I went to the beach. I escaped to the beach. It's my favourite place. 
I'm only assuming that the hypocrisy was that he went to one of our beaches because he'd shut his own down. <laughs> Thank you, Auron Mulder. Auron James. Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor. Look, um, on attachment um, one on page seven, uh, budget implications, uh, we'll just seek clarification in relation to short-term actions are being delivered through reallocation of existing budgets and refocusing currently funded programs. Uh, could you just explain that to me, please? It, it, and uh, perhaps Mr. Tui may be able to make a contribution here if that's his area, which I believe it is. Uh, Mr. Tui, you able to help us there? Um, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, what's meant by that is that, um, for, for example, we, we weren't able to uh, put on, uh, open up the gallery for public exhibition for a very popular, uh, a very popular exhibition, and as a result of that, uh, we we just uh, video record it and and put it online so that those people who had uh, participated in the works and those who wanted to view it were able to do it uh, elect electronically by going via council's website and Facebook. That's just one example. We also, um, with our popular children's um, um, young person's uh, holiday program with the arts and, uh, and events, uh, we actually did that online. We engaged an animator who actually did it online with uh, a group of young people and we had very positive feedbacks from the parents and the children involved. In fact, they wanted to do a, a second session of that. So they're, they're just a couple of immediate examples. Other ones where we reprioritise our existing resources was to support the volunteer program. As you would know, uh, the a good portion of our volunteers are in that vulnerable age group. Mm. So to support our existing clients, we redirected some of our rangers and other support staff who are willing to be involved to support mm. that program. Thank you. Um, can I take this opportunity uh, to congratulate uh, the staff, but mm. also Alderman Chong, who, who chaired the committee? Uh, it was her initiative, the way it unfolded. If you think back to when the COVID disaster first uh, rounded on us, uh, we as a council and the staff, uh, we're actually quite concerned about how we're going to retain our connection to the community if they're all locked down. Um, how are we going to continue our business? How are we going to continue providing our services if the normal ways of doing business weren't there available? And I think the Keep Connected uh, program responded to that. Uh, it certainly set out maintaining connections, letting people know that we were still available to talk to and to provide the services. So in, it, it actually performed a, a very important role when normal channels of communication were disrupted and the council chambers were closed. So I'd just like that make that statement for the record. Are there any other speakers? Uh, Alderman Chong, write a reply. Um, I guess just to uh, come back to Alderman Edmund's question um, very briefly, I, I guess there are two parts to the economic hardships that we need to consider. So one is the grant side of the program, and that's actually going to be coming up in, the, in an agenda item shortly. Um, but the other is the hardship policy, and I know we've discussed at workshops about extending that, and I believe that's something that will be considered at the budget um, meeting when we get to that point. Um, so other than that, I commend the motion to Council. Thank you. Could I have a voting box, please, General Manager? Should be should be up now, Mayor. So the motion is uh, essentially to receive the final report and note the recommendations. Another 15 seconds. We have everyone's voted. It's been accepted and agreed uh, unanimously. So thank you very much. Moving on to item 11.7.2. Uh, it's a final status report from the general manager in regarding the, uh, the uh, council's response to the COVID crisis. Um, and essentially is to endorse the recommendations in that report. Uh, could I have a mover and a seconder, please? 
Thank you, Orman Chong. Do I have a seconder? Uh, Orman Warren, thank you. Orman Chong. Um, I, I commend the report and the work that's gone into it from all of the staff through this period. I think they've done an amazing job in keeping council engaged and available for people while this happens. Um, and I think this is a, a good final report and a wind down of the business continuity and recovery plan. Thank you. Alderman Warren. Um, I support what um, Alderman Chong said that um, sums it up perfectly. Thank you. Uh, Alderman James. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Look, uh, item C in the recommendation um, notes the obviously the social recovery action plan that was approved by the general manager on the 3rd and including that the plan may be updated from time to time by the general manager subject to evolving circumstances. It seems as though that um, there's no stand down in relation to that. And it seems to me that I thought there was some termination date that not only was the uh, business community uh, continuity and, re and recovery plan sort of cease, but also to the actual actions that the general manager seems in this particular clause item C, that he has ongoing approval um, and that's subject to his assessment, I would imagine, of uh, circumstances um, as part of community recovery. I, I would have liked to have had some sort of closure on that, uh, given that A, B and D and E uh, are basically finalised, but C is open. And I would have thought that that ought to have some termination date on it. I, I think uh, it's important to note, and I'll ask the general manager to comment in a minute, that um, the emergency phase has been dealt with from a council point of view in terms of the business continuity recovery plan being completed and that the special delegations we granted the delegation to the general manager um, are now ceasing. What, what's continuing is the fact that we COVID-19 situation hasn't been fixed yet. It's still continuing and that council may need to uh, adjust its stance and make changes. For example, in uh, one immediately comes to mind is uh, how we organise the next council meeting uh, which is not done online, where we all get face to face together again. So the general manager clearly is going to have to have ongoing tasks which come under the social recovery action plan. General manager, could you comment further, please? Um, yes, thank you, thank you, Mayor, and uh, thank you, Alderman James, for the question. Um, the um, most succinct answer is that the social recovery action plan that I've approved is linked to the Southern Region Social Recovery Plan. And at the point in time that that plan is stood down under the emergency management legislation, our plan will also stand down automatically as well. So it'll keep going as long as those emergency and recovery actions are in place under the state government legislation. But that might be ad infinitum. Uh, it won't be ad infinitum, but at this point in time, we can't say just how long, Alderman James. That's right. Alderman Von Berto. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, I'd like to reiterate the amazing amount of work that has been done by the general manager and his staff and the way that they have done it. And also that a number of them have in fact, a large number of them have worked from home and that the services that have been provided to the community have by and large been seamless as compared to when the officers were working within the council building. So I think that we really need to say a very big thank you to the staff and they still are working incredibly hard in difficult circumstances and I'm always amazed by the quality of our staff and in this particular situation 
I think that they have done 150%. So thank you very much. Thank you. Alderman Pearce. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Look, I appreciate the words of the General Manager because I totally agree. This is not over yet. The situation is not over and we do need to be careful and there's certain things that we may have to do for a long, long time yet. So I certainly support the recommendation and I thank the General Manager for his comments. Thank you. Any other speakers? In that case, write a reply. Alderman Chong. Sorry, just trying to unmute, unmute myself. Um, yes, can I just reiterate everyone's comments with the thanks to the general manager and the staff who have indeed done a sterling job throughout all of this and seek council's support. Thank you. A voting box, please, general manager. Uh, it's up now, Mayor. So just to uh, summarise, we note the final um, status report, the ter uh, termination of the GM special delegations. I've just put that back up just in case anyone wants to see it. I have full, uh, I have all the responses now. The motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, moving on to 11.7.3, community grants program on hold and refocus to COVID-19 assistance. I understand Alderman Chong has circulated an alternative motion. Alderman Chong? Yes, thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Do we have a seconder, please, for that? Uh, can we read it first, please? <laughs> so, certainly. Can you put it up, please, uh, General Manager? And Alderman Warren that... seconded it. Yeah. Would you like okay, to speak, John, to, would you like to, speak to it, please? Sure. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, on the 27th of April, we agreed to defer the motion that was before us on community grants for two meetings. Um, we've subsequently discussed the, the grants program in our workshops um, and the additional funding from savings in the 2019-20 programs. And this alternate motion is designed to um, take those views and is derived from those discussions that we had at the workshops. In essence, there are three things that we'll do. Um, we will increase the available grants application to $100,000. We'll allocate an additional $60,000 for practical homelessness solutions in Clarence, and that's working with local partners um, to the local not-for-profit organisations to determine what's the most practical options that we can do. We'll also allocate $55,000 for any actions which arise from the Social Recovery Action Plan. As the General Manager said, we don't know what those will be yet, um, but the broad issues have already been outlined by the community and outlined in the plan. Um, the grants program will be administered by the Partnership Grants Assessment Panel, um, which comprises aldermen, officers and community members, so it gives a broad breadth of information and experience in determining what's the best allocation of these extra funds. I seek council support. Thank you. Alderman Warren. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor, and I do commend Alderman Chong on this motion. I think when we originally discussed this earlier in the year, there was a tendency to jump in and, and give money left, right and centre. And I think that we've done the right thing in waiting to see where the greatest need was because the government has been quite generous in, in grants and support for business and it was really prudent of us to wait and see where the gaps might be. And I think, again, those um, the, the impact on the community and the social recovery that's required is going to be a little less obvious and it's going to take more time to come to the fore. And I've had the opportunity to sit in on a few meetings of the Social Recovery Working Group as part of the COVID-19 Emergency Coordination Centre and heard from the experts in these areas like TASCOS and Salvation Army and Red Cross and those um, bodies that are working in this area. And I think we are going to see some social impacts um, in our area and it will be good to be able to respond to those rather than to lock ourselves in too early because I think that some of the worst effects of this are going to be felt when JobKeeper and JobSeeker come to an end and 
already with the um, changing to the arrangements around childcare, free childcare. I think we are going to see hardship and we are going to um, see sectors of the community affected who may not have experienced this sort of hardship before. Um, so um, I commend the motion and giving us the flexibility to, to do something that helps people in our area. And I know that aldermen have expressed concern about homelessness in Clarence before. We've done a report or we've had a report um, commissioned to find the extent of the problem. And we know that the services that may be available to people in Hobart City are not necessarily available in Clarence. And we do regularly get reports of people sleeping in tents um, near the beaches. And I think this is only going to um, become a bigger problem. So I do commend the motion to council. Um, I think it's an appropriate response and a considered a, a response. So I commend the motion. Thanks, Alderman Warren. Alderman Pearce. Thank you, Mayor. When I first read this motion, I thought, geez, we're jumping the gun a bit too quickly. I would have liked to have seen this uh, come back to a follow meeting, but uh, Alderman Chong quite rightly said we did recommend it for, to be delayed for up to two meetings. It's already the 9th of June now, but you know, if we could have uh, let it go for another three weeks to see how things pan out, but I, I understand that's not feasible. So I'll support the recommendation. Thank you, Excellent. Mayor. Yes. Other speakers? Yes. Um, I thought Alderman I'd raise... Yeah. Uh, Alderman Edmonds, I think. Oh, okay. I, I didn't want to jump in. Um, no, I thought you were next uh, to have your hand up. Okay. Uh, I think uh, Alderman Chong's done a pretty good job summarising this. We've, uh, this has been a journey that's obviously still ongoing, but has tested us and can, will continue to test us. Uh, there's a lot of different views around this table. Um, not everything I'm wrapped about, but I do feel like feedback has been listened to. Um, you know, we've had concerns about the quantum and also dot point three and B. You know, I just hope that that money is um, is used. Uh, um, the word escapes is, is used carefully and, and judiciously um, rather than being seen as money that's there to be spent. Um, I think we've already touched on it and I think Alderman Warren did a good job talking about the fact that uh, people financially aren't out of the woods yet by any stretch of the imagination and I'll just say again that, that our hardship policy I think is the best thing that we've done in this in this circumstances and while uptake might have been lower to begin with I think for people to have that uh, up their sleeve in the, in the uh, 12 months to come would be would be better than uh, most things we could do, to be honest, if we could wear a bit of deferral rather than, um, you know, versus uh, money going out the door. Um, so, yeah, I appreciate the effort that Alderman Chong's gone to here to summarise where people are at. I think the homelessness initiatives is a timely time for us to be doing that, uh, recognising how much uh, talking we've done about that issue since uh, this council has been elected. So. It has my support. Um, I think you've done a good job in trying to truncate everyone's views into one motion around one sort of bucket of, of cash. So thank you. Thanks, Alderman Evans. Alderman James. Uh, yes, thanks, Mr Chairman. The question, let's start with a question first. And um, it says that um, B endorses the carried forward of unspent funds from 2019 to 2020 estimates to the 2021 estimates. Uh, in what vote, what vote has that come out of? In other words, is X number of dollars that have been unspent from, well, for this financial year uh, and what what where have they come from what what vote is that uh, attributable to please thank you general manager can you help there please uh yeah thanks for the question um the um dollars comes from uh funds that were allocated in the current estimates that were unable to be expended because of the impact of the COVID crisis 
Um, Mr. Tui made reference to some of those examples in an answer to an earlier question. So we had a range of impacts on programs across the board. We've tallied those up and uh, being able to identify $150,000. Uh, there isn't a council decision. Um, that $150,000 was first put forward uh, on the 27th of April for um, the original version of the grants allocation that was first triggered by the 6th of April decision of this council. Um, so the, the, I suppose the short answer to Alderman James' question is that uh, the council decision in respect to the 150,000 reallocation is this decision. Um, uh, okay. Mr. Tui, are you able to add to that? Through you, Mr. Mayor. No, that, that's an accurate summary. Okay, Gordon okay. James. Uh, yes, look, um, and given that there's 150,000 in Part B and Presumably, B.1 is comprised or made up of that 150,000. Is that right? So we've got 65, 35, 100. Then we've got another amount of 60,000. Now, don't get me wrong, I was very supportive of some funds going towards homelessness and I think this has been identified clearly here um, although the workings of that I'll be making another comment under in in C when I get to that but so so we're looking at dot point one 150,000 dot point two another 60,000 and then the balance of funds to fund any additional expenditure required to deliver the objectives is 55,000. So am I no, in my look, sums? Uh, I, I think we might ask the general manager to clarify this again, <laughs> please. I don't follow your arithmetic there, Alderman James. So let's see if we can follow the general managers. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Mayor. Um, so the 150,000 comes from the current estimates yep. uh, within the within recommendation B.1, the 60,000, 65,000 allocation is the proposed allocation for the community support grants and partnership grants for the coming financial year. Uh, that's the same amount as was in the in the this financial year. So it's exactly the same amount going forward. The 150 is made up of the $35,000. 60,000 and the 55. Okay, thanks. Yep. Okay. Okay. And finally, C, um, my reading of this, and I stand corrected, authorise the Partnership Grants Assessment Panel to coordinate, okay, the allocation of grant funds between those grants. Is it uh, determined uh, that it'll come back for council for, for ratification, or is it the bee's knees of the, the assessment panel to make that determination regardless of any confirmation of council? Um, thanks for the question. Um, the community support grants um, will be resolved by the committee and recommendations, as I understand it, will come from the uh, committee in respect to the partnership grants. They're the larger grants. They're up to $15,000. Uh, so they do come back to council for final yep. approval. Okay, Alderman von Berto. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I would like to thank Alderman Chong for taking into account a suggestion that I made in terms of rescinding part of the decision that we made included in the community support package on the 6th of April, as far as the business grants were concerned coming within the community support grants program because at our workshop on the 1st of June, we worked through that and determined that other levels of government were actually dealing with businesses and their support, and also that we were dealing with businesses in other aspects of our response to COVID-19. And I do remember at the time when we were discussing this package 
the like felt that to widen the community grants in that way was actually going to change the nature of the grants program quite dramatically. So I'm glad to see part A within the motion. As far as uh, part B is concerned and the aspect related to homelessness, the $60,000, that sounds like a lot of money, but in actual fact, when we look at the spectrum of homelessness within Tasmania, within Australia, and certainly within Clarence, we have a spectrum from the chronic rough sleepers through to, if you like, the housed homeless. And so 60,000 is a fairly small amount to look at those particular issues and we will need to think very carefully and to consider very carefully how we are going to fund practical homelessness initiatives, but certainly a really good start. Thank you. Other speakers? Uh, no, I haven't finished. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'd also like to ask Alderman Chong, and I did email her, and I'm sure she has the answer uh, now in her right of reply. Could she actually let us know what's going to happen as far as those applicants who made an application for the last round of the community support grants, which was put on hold? So will they be able to apply again uh, in this new context? Thanks, Thanks, Alderman Bonverda. I'm sure Alderman Chong will pick that up in the right of reply. Are there any other speakers? In that case, Alderman Chong. Oh, sorry, Alderman Walker. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Look, I think we're getting on for about nine weeks since that decision of the 6th of April. That decision of the 6th of April is the context for the changes that are before us tonight. Um, and I don't think it's problematic to again um, say well done to Alderman Ewington on the alternative put forward on that night. Uh, it was right in the acute stage of things and some people were losing their mind. Uh, he certainly wasn't. It was a, it was a very um, judicious motion. It was a motion that was bearing in mind that taking a mar you know treating it like a marathon, not a sprint mm -hmm. is right. Um, you know, some of the suggestions around that time, uh, if were followed through, would have put the council into serious hock um, and, and been proven superfluous with the state and federal interventions. Um, do I like Alderman Chong's alternate? It's not everything for me. It's not quite my cup of tea, but um, given the different perspectives and given the challenges that there were uh, amending that component, I think it's a, it's a pretty good job. So I will be supporting it. Um, again, it's targeted. I, I know uh, Alderman Edmonds' comments around uh, supporting people with uh, the challenges when they're meeting their rates because um, this has got a fair way to go yet. Um, so you've got to keep marching on. I think this is the right way to do it. Um, so, yeah, I will be supporting this uh, amendment and um, we just, uh, yeah, as I said, we've got, a, we've got a bit of a way to go yet. Um, so just keep uh, keep the pace. Thank you. Any final speakers? Yeah, if I just quickly, Mr. Men. Uh, who's that, please? Uh, oh, Alderman Newington. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, look, yeah, I mean, I, I think that the point that uh, Alderman Walker made then was was pretty important about even though we've now approved this. Um, well, we're going to approve it more than likely. I think once again we still need to hold on and make sure that we don't spend it because we just think we have to straight away. Um, you know, I mean, I think there's going to be some examples come up through the whole process. They're going to difficult to sort of pick one between the other, and I think that's the, the, the dilemma we're going to have is that we're going to be outstripped by people applying for this. And I'd just like to think on on all of all the areas. I think we need to make sure we we very considered and we uh, make sure that we don't spend just for the sake of it. And once again, I'd like to see it spend on actual. You know, and, and the, you know, the vast, you know, it, and especially with the, the middle one there, I think I raised this at the briefing the other day, that we don't just spend more money on, um, in, from a homeless point of view, on, on funding the NGOs who are already funded to do this, 
that we actually do do it towards something that actually helps the homeless people um, in some shape or form directly. So not this, um, uh, you know, that's really the critical thing for me to make sure that's really what we do. Thank you. Autumn Blumley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, it won't come as any surprise to colleagues that uh, uh, I was in the minority. My view was that uh, by the other two tiers of government, we should have uh, should have gone hard and we should have gone fast. And um, um, the democratic record or the record shows in democracy, uh, I was outvoted there. <laughs> I'd um, found uh, and find this package um, exceedingly underwhelming. Um, when commercial operators in our state are gearing up to write off hundreds of thousands of dollars to assist Tasmanians in our hour of need, those many thousands in our city who have lost their jobs and are experiencing uh, real hardship, um, we've decided to adopt uh, a small target approach and give people, um, you know, uh, as we have decided to do three months grace and fourth rates instalment before we start waking them with late payment fees. Uh, my view was, Mr Mayor, um, and remains that um, we can, uh, we must, and we should have done better. Uh, it is, Mr Mayor, for those small businesses that I uh, first came to this body in a workshop um, and uh, some many months ago now, who have helped make Clarence a wonderful place it is today. The good, hard-working operators of those businesses who have worked hard and employed local people and supported their families and paid their bills that in my view, Mr Mayor, uh, we are duty bound to assist. And in return, over the years, they've asked for very little. But now many of them are facing a humiliating end to years of hard work. Their businesses are in tatters, the staff have been laid off, and the sign on the front door says closed. They face an uncertain future, Mr Mayor, and my view was and remains that if we don't do everything in our power to ensure they return, we will lose those businesses and with it they employ and the other local businesses they support. Now, I get the fact that, uh, that I'm in the minority here, but my view was that we should have stepped up to the plate, but the other two tiers of government did. It's all well and good, uh, hand on heart, to say that uh, you know, we get a strong, uh, a strong budget, and we do. In fact, I've often been quoted, and I'm quite happy to say now on the record, I think we have a lazy balance sheet. I really do. And that gave us the capacity to step up and to provide the assistance. But if this is where we've landed, this is where we've landed. And something is better than nothing, although I've got a place on the record, Mr Mayor, that in my view, this is far from adequate. Thank you. Oliver Mulder. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I would take a... Um Surprisingly, of course, a slightly different perspective on this one. <laughs> Federal and state governments have provided things like job seeker, job keeper, state and federal government business grants, some of which were oversubscribed and then had to um, had to uh, uh, be recommitted. All these things, and the big question being asked now around all these programs is that there are certain segments of the economy that are going to struggle going forward. And the next round of government stimulus as we climb out of the pandemic will be related to trying to help those, in particular, entertainment, the arts and, uh, and, and tourism. And this is where the rub is. The CEO of um, Westpac, uh, I heard the other day saying, um, it's a sad fact of life that in any time, particularly now, some businesses will close some will bounce back better than they were before. Some won't miss a beat on the way through. But it's a fact of life that some businesses do not survive into the new environment. And what we as a council could do about that, in light of the fact that JobKeeper, JobSeeker and the whole heap of programs, programs that are going to be tailored for those who can make it through out the other end. The problem with our economy in Tasmania is that um, it's not a problem, it was an opportunity which um, was seized by, uh, by, by both parties when they were in government um, and has been the engine room of a lot, is international tourism. I, for one, can't see international tourism bouncing back for a long, long time in anything like the numbers. 
Same applies to our university sector. Those sorts of issues are going to be, have ramifications through. And us here giving individual support is a great. And I think the council needs to see its place in the scheme of things. The focus on homelessness and what we can actually do in practical terms is good. And the one that comes to me is um, the Loaves and Fishes organisation, which distributes a massive amount of food throughout Tasmania, yet slipped through the federal government funding net. And, and Tasmania's food industries got nothing. Now, if you want to look at a program that does something about those who fell through the cracks at the individual level, then that's a program that I would be certainly looking at because they have continued to struggle through they have continued to support the homeless and the very targeted people who are falling through all the other cracks. And they will have the opportunity, if we were to be smart, to turn around and say, let's get in there and help this particular NGO get its act together and, and support. That's the level of targeting that we as a council can get involved in. Thank you. Other speakers? Uh, right of reply, Alderman Chong. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, to come to Alderman von Berto's question first, <clears throat> um, the intention is that the people who had previously applied for grants um, will be contacted. Obviously, not all of those applications will be possible, practical. They may not wish to continue with them at this point. But I think it's it's really important that we contact them as part of this process to make sure that if they do want to put in to carry forward that application, that we do so, so that they don't get lost along the way. I guess to summarise, um, yes, this this is not going to be the panacea to all known ills. Of course it won't be. But I think we've taken the view all the way through that we shouldn't try and compete with state and federal federal funding, that we need to look at what's important to us as a community I think what this motion tries to do and where it's allocating the funds is actually to be relevant to Clarence and to the people in Clarence and not to compete with all the other sources of funding that are around. And I think on that, I've probably said sufficient and I commend the motion. Uh, thank you very much, uh, General Manager. If we could have a voting box for Alderman Chong's alternative motion, please. Should be coming up now, Mayor. Up now. Okay, um, uh, ten seconds. We have. Uh, Everyone voted now. The motion is carried. Thank you very much. So moving on now to item 12, Alderman's question time. Um, there are no questions on notice or answers to question on notice. There are answers to questions without notice from the previous council meeting, which I propose we take as read. So now we have uh, questions without notice. And if I could ask Alderman Warren first, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, look, I, I know if it had gone around the virtual table, somebody else would ask this question, but can I ask through you to the general manager to give us an update on where two of our significant projects that require um, or that rely on and or a strong tourist trade, i.e. Kangaroo Bay and Rosney Hill, uh, where those projects are sitting at the moment, please. General manager. Um, thank you for the question, Alderman Warren. Uh, in relation to the Kangaroo Bay Hotel project, uh, we're still waiting for an update uh, from uh, the proponents. Um, we've had some informal contact over the uh, last week to indicate that they're nearing a conclusion uh, and we would expect to hear from them very shortly. In terms of the Ros Rosney Hill project, uh, there was a uh, decision from Rampat um, um, about a week or so ago uh, deferring that hearing, um, I believe, to a date in August, but I don't think that date's been accurately set. There was a, a uh, directions hearing 
uh, to be conducted, I think, on the 25th of June this month. Thank you. Um, Autumn Walker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as we're all aware, there's plenty of beautiful coastal tracks in our uh, municipality. We are indeed truly blessed. Um, my question is in relation to the Roaches Beach to Seven Mile Beach coastal walk, uh, and I call it a walk, even though when you go to the website it talks about it being an easy mountain bike ride. Uh, I would hate to think of the cost of putting a fence along here, let alone the degradation to the amenity if it was done so. My question is, given that this track is in parts narrower than the handlebars of a mountain bike, uh, and given it's used by a variety of families for walking as well, is it appropriate uh, and reasonable that uh, this is a um, walking and cycling pathway. Mr Graham, are you able to take that or? Uh, through Mr Mayor, I'll take that one on notice and do some investigation with my officers and, and advise Alderman through a briefing. Uh, sounds like we need some sort of safety assessment there. Thank you. Um, did you have uh, another question? Yeah, yes, I did, and I wasn't asking for a safety assessment that's going to end up with another big fence like Anzac Park. I'm just wondering if those two uses are uh, can cohabitate. Um, my second question is in relation um, to the uh, role of the mayor in uh, deputising other aldermen to fill in for his place at events. Now, uh, I wouldn't wish to be the mayor, and... Uh, and I understand that as a spoil of office, it's the mayor's gift as to how they determine uh, who gets allocated to deputise in what positions. Um, but on the basis of transparency, what is the downside in actually listing in the quarterly report what aldermen were deputised to events and what those events were? Good question. Yeah, look, I'm quite happy to do that. <laughs> um, might add that there haven't been too many things to depute for over the last three months, but uh, um, I certainly... Uh, if it helps before we, um, my, my basic policy is that if a committee chair, if, if an issue involves uh, business associated with being, someone being a committee chair, then that would be a priority for, um, for representation. But the first priority, of course, goes to the deputy mayor. But anyway, I'm happy to include a list on that. Thank you. Okay. Um, Orlan van Berto. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have two questions. The first one is, when will the consultation on the revised South Arm Master Plan begin and end? Mr. Graham, can you help us there, please? Oh, yes, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the consultation on the South Arm Oval Master Plan will commence within the next two weeks, and we're aiming to end in July. Uh, just a supplementary, when in July? So how long will the consultation go for? I imagine, I'll confirm that, but I imagine it'll be at least four weeks. Thank you. And my second question is, what was the cost of the Bell Reeve pontoon? And how much will it cost to transport it to and from the storage site? Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, um, the approximate cost of the pontoon, including the boys and consultants, is about $90,000. And the cost to transport uh, the pontoon from the water through to the council storage facility is approximately $3,500. That's to and from? Uh, that's to. So um, f uh, when we um, return the pontoon, in October, it'll be approximately another three and a half thousand dollars. And so that's going to be every year, Mr. Graham. Uh, we're talking approximately seven thousand dollars every year. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, Alderman Pierce. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, two questions: the security fencing, as directed by our insurers at Anzac Park and, and Bellree Beach, what's happening there? Uh, yeah, through Mr. Mayor. Uh, we are at the moment um, finalised. We finalised our um, documents to get contracting pricing and it's just with um, governance for review at the moment. And then we'll get that out for contractors for to uh, um, obtain some quotations. Thank you. My second question is 
I noticed walking around there's a lot of cars parked on footpaths and I, I know it's been a, a difficulty for many people, especially women with prams. Uh, what can we do about it, if anything? Uh, through Mr. Mayor, uh, I haven't heard of that one before, so I'll get um, our officers to um, investigate it and see whether I need assistance from um, Mr. Oh. Tui's rangers as well in terms of helping with that situation. Well, just in my block, between one one a block, there's four cars on the footpath tonight. Okay, yeah. thanks, Alderman Pearce. Um, well, obviously, it's a matter for our rangers to have a look in the first instance to get some data. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Mulder. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, my questions relate to the uh, what progress there might be uh, on the Richmond Bypass and the duplication of the East Derwin Highway through Risdon. Um, we were promised an online chat and a workshop, and I understand the time has um, that uh, the time is a circumstances, but I would have thought that we might have uh, squeezed a little bit of time in the last week or two to uh, get an online chat. My fear is that time is slipping away from us on this one. Uh, Mr Graham, probably in your Barleywick as well. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, yes, um, uh, our um, officers are under the pump at the moment, but I'll try and get that information out to Alderman as soon as I can on the online chat forum. Alderman Mulder. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And the other one relates to a question I've asked a couple of times now in relation to the um, to the costings of uh, actually constructing a school road and sealing it properly. I. Uh, uh, thank you, Alderman Mulder. Um, the answer of that's going to be provided with all the answers um, for the, from the budget review undertaken on the 29th of May. Um, it will be included in that information, which I'm hoping to achieve by the end of this week. Uh, 29th of May uh... was when we did the capital budget review, and um, that was one of the questions raised in that um, meeting as well, and it'll be in the answer at the end of this week to the Alderman. Okay. Alderman Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And just one question from me. And first of all, I must uh, apologise to colleagues for not being able to access my camera tonight. Not necessarily a bad thing, I think. But um, and through you, Mr. Mayor, probably to Ross Graham. And this is a localised question. Um, as the level of traffic movement, including heavy vehicles, continues to increase through the Seven Mile Beach Village and that commences around 6am, finishing at best at 7pm. There remains a few hours during the day where there's very little traffic. Can you please provide details um, of when traffic assessments in this area are undertaken? Thank you. Uh, I might need a bit of clarification in terms of traffic assessments. Is that when council officers or engineers are undertaking traffic assessments? Or? Uh, probably around um, any new developments, the traffic impact assessment that um, is undertaken at that time. Uh, yeah, they're undertaken by private consultants and we don't have any control of actually when they are undertaking their own assessments. Okay. The gentleman just got his hand up. He might be able to help here. Uh, you muted, Sorry. General Manager. Uh, thank you. Um, probably just to clarify Alderman Kennedy's uh, question. Um, Alderman Kennedy, are you asking uh, for clarity around the time of day that traffic assessments are undertaken? Correct. Right. Thank you. Um, we'll I, need to I take that on notice. Uh, take it on notice. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Alderman James. Uh, yes, again, uh, two questions. Uh, firstly, with regard to 19 Corran Street in Howrah, uh, Mr General Manager, has Council been made aware of any revised plans um, that, that were endorsed by RIMPAT that have been or in, in the process of being provided to Council? Um, thank you for the question. I think we answered something very similar to this at the last meeting. Um, we're not aware, or at least I'm not aware of any revised plans. Uh, and revised plans don't go back to REMPAT. They uh, come to council as no, the building authority. Uh, yeah. 
So uh, Rampart has no involvement beyond the permit, the planning permit. Uh, this is a building matter. Um, so we're not aware of any plans unless uh, John or Ross have become aware. Thank you. Uh, so you, Mr. Mayor. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, there's been no revised building plans being lodged with us. Thank you. Uh, and through you, Mr. Mayor, there have been no revised planning application, uh, planning plans either. Right. Thank you. Um, secondly, second question is um, earlier this evening, a urgency motion was put and considered. Uh, does this relate to 1 Cremorne Avenue, Cremorne? I'm sorry, Alderman James, I'm not at liberty to answer that question. Um, Alderman Newington. No, good, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Alderman Edmonds. Uh, yes, I have two. Uh, I know Alderman Warren asked a question about Kangaroo Bay earlier. Could could I have it, ex or could we have it explained um, the process that would go, the council would have to go through if it was to trigger the buyback clause of this land if the uh, if further extension wasn't granted? Um, yes, yeah, certainly, um, Alderman Edmonds. Um, the buyback clause um, essentially says that if um, the developer hasn't achieved substantial commencement, which is in this case defined as in-ground works um, on, the, on the hotel site, if that hasn't been commenced by a date in November, I believe, um, then it triggers the buyback um, clause, uh, but there's no definition as to process around that. So um, council would need, in my view, um, to take advice on how to actually um, activate that. Uh, thank you. Um, and my second question, um, has, the, has the council uh, had any communications or discussions with the Minister for Local Government around an extension to the legislation and procedures around online meetings? Thank you. General Manager, uh, can you help us sir? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, the, I'll, I'll provide an answer in a couple of parts, Alderman Edmonds. Um, the first is um, that the Minister for Local Government has been um, made aware through a regular um, mayors and general managers meeting that he's been holding every few weeks, um, that that is a concern for us. However, um, the legislation, and I must admit I'd forgotten this in the in all of the activity that had followed its introduction, the legislation essentially says that from the cessation date of the emergency, whenever that is declared, 60 days after that, the notices that have been issued cease to have effect. So we have 60 days after a declaration that the crisis has ceased. Um, at this point in time, uh, the earliest that that might logically be, uh, and I'm hypothesising here, it's not based on anything other than what I'm observing, that would be around mid-July. Um, but um, as we all know, anything could happen between now and then, and there could be simply a decision to leave the arrangements in place. So um, the short answer is we've got 60 days from the cessation date to resume normal council meetings, not, as I originally thought, uh, an immediate return. Does that assist? Does that answer your question? That is. That's great. Thank you. Cheers. Uh, Alderman Bromley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, um, colleagues won't be surprised to hear that my questions were going to do it River Ferry Project. And to follow on from the answer provided to my question at last council meeting, where we were advised the project has now been transferred to programming and delivery, and a project manager has been allocated to manage this as part of an integrated approach to urban congestion management. Mr. Mayor, in light of the RACT uh, acknowledging this, as one of their top five priorities for the state. Is a general manager, uh, or through you, Mr. Mayor, is, uh, are we able to provide advice as to where this project three weeks on is now at? General manager. Um, thank you for the question, Alderman Blomley. Um, the short answer is no, I'm not at this point in time. I haven't had any further meetings with um, the Department of State Growth in that intervening period. Those meetings have been generally following the city heart um, uh, functions. 
um, and noting that uh, DSG officers have been very heavily committed in terms of the COVID response. Um, but I can undertake the follow up and get an update for you yeah. and assist. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, Alderman Chong, did you have a question? No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, um, well, that brings us to the end of the open session of Council. I'd like to thank those members of the public that have uh, stayed with us to this point. Uh, we do have several confidential matters that we do need to deal with, and for that purposes, we can't be open to the public. So, General Madger, if you could conclude the live stream.